quite a long walk from the back of the room. And um, thanks to the guys earlier on. It's a pleasure to be here and an absolute um, honour to talk to you this morning. And some of the key themes that came out around compliance, around being able to keep up with an ever-changing technology landscape, um, understanding a changing threat environment, I think are absolutely critical and part of what I wanted to talk about today. And understanding what's going to happen, being able to model scenarios and get into the heart, really, of, of that adaptability, the ability to change and keep pace with what's happening, I think is it's the challenge that faces the CISO, it's the challenge that faces all of us. It's a challenge that faces us as individuals, you know, as Jan Luca talked about. People respond to things at a personal level. People respond to things differently at a professional level. And how we mesh all of those, all those different motivations together is going to be, I think, is going to prove the difference to whether we continue to feel bombarded by information security and cyber security, or whether we're able to take a slightly more proactive stance. And those are some of the things we want to talk about today. And is that, you know, that feeling of being really hemmed in at the moment, every single time I open my email, every single time I look on the news, cyber security, in different, different banks, different industries, whether it's, you know, a lot of time spent this week, you know, looking and thinking about the healthcare industry and, and the ramifications of what happened to Anthem. But uh, alongside that, that feeling of being hemmed in professionally and personally. So we look around our, our house at home. We've got a, a, a very young daughter. Every morning we sit down as a family and have breakfast. Most mornings we FaceTime family, grandparents who live abroad. I think they've got, at uh, last count, 14 or, f or 15 screens in our house that you can access, whether it's phones, tablets, televisions, and it's really great to know that Samsung's now listening to all of the inane chat that happens in our uh, family in the morning. Um, but what that really drives home to me is that in a few months or years, those screens are going to multiply. All of us have the same kind of dependence on devices and dependence on information that flows through those devices and how they access different systems. And that's going to form the, you know, a large part of what happens and how information is used for us at HP is driving those scenarios that we're trying to model. And that's what I want to talk about. Some of those scenarios, what's happening today, and some of the big disruptive trends that are going to, are going to really challenge us in the future. Um, the adversary that we face is both uniquely positioned to exploit our inability to understand those trends, our inability to keep up with new regulation, our inability to collaborate and share information as we talked about, you know, big things to do in the future, share outside of our organizations, talk across industries, understand what regulation means and get people to, to adopt best practice. Our adversary is uniquely placed to out-innovate us, to think about the malicious use of new technologies and to share information and to monetize that in an amazing way. And whilst we have a huge challenge building cybersecurity capability, information security professionals, retaining, developing, promoting them within our organizations, our adversary are doing this in a very beautiful, ad hoc and practical manner. You know, the, the average age of a hacker is just 24 years old. They understand exactly the challenges that we're trying to adapt to every second of the day. And I think that is a huge wake-up call to all of us. And we live in a world that is you know, very mobile dependent. All of us here, and hopefully most of us, have turned off, our, turned off our phones. I know I was at GCHQ a couple of weeks ago, and it was a beautiful environment. You know, almost sort of eight hours without any access to the internet, without my phone, all my electric devices were taken off me. I still found myself reaching in my pocket to check my messages on the notepad, but it was a paper notepad and I had to put it back in my pocket. On average, our research tells us that we check our, our mobile devices or mobile smartphones 150 times a day. That seems a lot, but it seems not so much. 50 of those is for messages and calls. 18 times is to... Um, check the time. Eight times of that is to look at photos. 80% of us use our smartphones whilst we're watching television. The transition from a, an analog to a digital environment hasn't described really what's happened. From being connected to hyper-connected to constantly connected is changing how we use authentication and passwords, but how we change our lives. 